President Obama is engaged in a soundbite leadership governing style. Since he doesn't know how to be an actual leader, he just uses often repeated sound bites where he hopefully tries to get his message across to politicians and the American citizenry. He must spend his entire day, when he's not planning a vacation, coming up with new and clever ways to sound presidential when in reality, he sounds just like a whiner. Just like he did in his speech from the Oval Office the other day on the horrific terrorist attack in San Bernardino, California that killed 14 innocent American citizens. Obama's new soundbite, of course, is about guns and it is to deflect from the real issue of radical Islamic terrorism that Obama is so afraid to mention he can't even talk about it by name. This new soundbite is about the no-fly list that is maintained by the Department of Homeland Security and the TSA. And it goes something like this. If you're too dangerous to board a plane, then you're too dangerous to buy a gun. Okay, that seems legit right up front, and we'll go with that, but there are plenty of reasons not to. Because it's not really a black and white issue, and it's not clear who actually goes on the list, but really, that's for an entirely another video. We'll just go with that. So let's just say no one who is on the no-fly list should be able to buy a gun. And Obama says that here. People on the no-fly list can walk into a store and buy a gun. That's insane. If you're too dangerous to board a plane, you're too dangerous by definition to buy a gun. And here. Congress should act to make sure no one on a no-fly list is able to buy a gun. What could possibly be the argument for allowing a terrorist suspect to buy a semi-automatic weapon? And I don't know why Obama is actually harping on this issue, because neither of the killers in the San Bernardino massacre were on the no-fly list. So honestly, it's an entirely moot point. But that's kind of what Obama does anyway, make irrelevant moot points to deflect from his lack of ability to lead. But, and this is a big but, but what about the 72 Department of Homeland Security employees that are on the no-fly list? What about them? <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> how did that happen? How did employees who work for the organization that is supposed to secure our borders and keep our nation safe, that was created after 9-11, how did these 72 people get a job working for the government at the Department of Homeland Security. How does that happen? You can check out this article that I'm gonna to link to in the description below this video that explains exactly the seriousness of this situation and what's going on here. Who exactly is working in our government? And more importantly, what is Barack Hussein Obama going to do about it? If you shouldn't be able to buy a gun, according to President Obama, because you're too dangerous to fly on an airplane, then why should you be able to work for the Department of Homeland Security if you're too dangerous to fly on an airplane? Just saying.